So hello level two physicists, welcome to our next lesson, uh, projectiles at an angle. So we've looked at free fall, uh, we've looked at projectiles in the horizontal, now we're going to combine them and look at projectiles at an angle. And to do that you need to utilize the four kinematic equations, so you need to be familiar with them. So from our previous lesson, XY problem solving steps, so you basically you start with Y, um, the y direction and assume it's a free wall full problem okay so that means the acceleration is going to be minus 9.81 meters per second per second in the y direction and the air time for both the x and y direction are the same so tx equals ty and therefore you can solve for the x direction because you know that the velocity is going to be constant so the initial velocity in the x direction will equal the initial uh, the final velocity in the x direction and in the x direction, the acceleration is zero, okay, because um, acceleration is the final minus the initial velocity divided by time, which will be zero. And the distance uh, in the x direction, therefore, can be worked out by the um, velocity, um, which is constant times time. Okay, so once you plug those numbers in, you'll see um, that the velocity uh, in terms of final initial is the same in x, uh, the acceleration is zero and the acceleration in y is minus 9.81 meters per second per second. So remembering vectors, you can work out if you are given the angle and the uh, initial velocity, um, the total initial velocity, you can work out the uh, components of the initial velocity in the x and y direction. Okay, so to do that, um, you can use SOCARTOA, so cos theta, will equal the uh, initial velocity uh, in the x direction divided by 24 in this example and sine theta will equal the initial velocity in the y direction uh, divided by 24. Therefore, um, the initial velocity in the x direction will be 24 cos 55 or 13.8 meters per second and the initial velocity in the y direction will be 24 sine 55 degrees or 19.7 meters per second. So in terms of one dimensional motion, okay, you will see that as the ball goes up, um, the velocity decreases under the effect of gravity, okay, because you've got that deceleration of minus 9.81 meters per second per second. And as the ball goes down, it will uh, increase um, in terms of velocity but it will be a negative velocity, okay? Because remember, again, the acceleration going down is still negative 9.81 meters per second per second. In the x direction, it's going to be constant the velocity. So in terms of a horizontal projectile, um, the initial velocity um, equals, at least in the x direction, will equal the initial velocity in the, uh, sorry, the final velocity uh, in the x direction. And the y direction, the initial velocity will be zero because you're starting from rest. And in terms of acceleration, uh, the acceleration in the x direction is zero because the velocities are constant in the x direction. And the acceleration due to gravity uh, in the y direction is minus 9.81 meters per second per second. Okay, so you'll see on the diagram you see before you, the red line um, gives you the resultant vector uh, of the two components. Okay, and the blue line or light blue line is going to give you the velocity in the x direction and the dark blue line gives you the velocity in the y direction. So in terms of a two-dimensional projectile, uh, again, the, 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 the vectors are shown there. Okay, so you will see that the, um, the initial uh, velocity in the y direction is greatest at the start and of course it's constant in the x direction the uh, velocity and the red line again shows you the resultant vector so at the top of the uh, the motion you will see that the um, resultant vector equals the uh, constant velocity in the x direction okay and the um, velocity in the y direction goes to zero at the top, okay, as you can clearly see, and it's a maximum at the bottom. 
So in terms of the projectile in the first half of the motion of the projectile, you will see that um, you can determine that 13.8 meters per second uh, is the initial velocity uh, in the x direction and 13.8 therefore is the um, final velocity because they're equal. Um, and how you get that number is through SOKATOA, okay, because you're given the angle and the uh, resultant initial velocity. Um, you can also determine the uh, initial velocity um, of the uh, y direction by the same means, okay, again using SOKATOA, uh, which is 19.7 meters per second. Um, using velocity, uh, distance equals velocity times time, you can therefore work out the distance. Uh, to get halfway through to the top is going to be 27.6 meters in the x direction and 19.7 meters in the uh, y direction. And you also know the acceleration is zero in the x direction and minus 9.81 meters per second per second in the y direction. So therefore you can use that to find t, which is two seconds. And the second half, um, it's just as straightforward, okay, it's basically just a doubling up, okay. The only difference, of course, being that the uh, initial velocity um, in the uh, y direction is going to be zero, and of course the uh, initial velocity in the x direction will be 13.8 again, because it's going to be um, the same all the way through. And the t equals two seconds. So what does that mean? Okay, so projectile motion for the full thing, the total time will be two times two seconds. Okay, so it takes two seconds to get up to the top, it'll take two seconds to come down, so it'll be four seconds overall. And if it's 27.6 meters in the x direction, um, when you get halfway up, then it'll be double that again. So it'll be 27.6 meter, meters times two, or 55.2 meters completely in the x direction, displacement in x. So just to summarize that, total time will be 2t, okay? Displacement will be uh, two times the distance in the x direction um, because the initial velocity uh, and the final velocity in the x direction are equal and the final velocity is gonna be zero uh, in the y direction, it's gonna land, and the acceleration is zero meters per second per second in the x direction and a negative 9.81. Uh, meters per second per second in the y direction. So you're basically breaking it down into two parts. And that is projectile motion on an angle.